Okay, so I hope you've been enjoying break so far. We've got a couple of things for us to look at over break just so we can catch up a little bit. Um, this is my first video lesson I'm doing, so it's not going to probably run as perfectly as I want it to, but we're going to try and get as much done as we can so that we can have, you know, get a little bit more uh, content in before the AP test comes up. It's just about a little under three months away and we still have uh, a good amount to do. So the topic that we'll be talking about today is simple harmonic motion, or you might hear this called simple harmonic oscillation. It's a good unit to do a video lesson with because you know a lot about this already. Um, a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about is review, and there's just like a little tiny bit of new stuff that we're going to throw on top. And um, so I guess let's just get right in. Whenever you hear the word oscillation, we're going to start with some vocabulary words. Oscillation is a big term in this unit. Um, an oscillation is very simple. People get confused. They think it's like some very complicated thing. All an oscillation is, it is a repeated back and forth motion. That's it. That's all an oscillation is. It is a back and forth motion that repeats over and over, over time. There are many different types of oscillations. There's a bunch of different ways to describe something that moves back and forth. However, the one that we're looking at is simple harmonic oscillation, or otherwise known as simple harmonic motion. And what that is, uh, that is a type of oscillation with two defining characteristics. So type of oscillation in which these two things happen. The object is subject to what is known as a restoring force. That restoring force is proportional to the object's displacement. So first characteristic, an, ob uh, an object is subject to a restoring force that's proportional to the object's displacement. And secondly, this restoring force acts opposite the displacement. I'll get to what this means in just a second, but we're going to define what a restoring force is first. Uh, but last thing I want you to write under simple harmonic motion or oscillation, um, if this motion is graphed versus time, it makes a special type of graph. It creates what is known as a sinusoidal graph. You know what this graph looks like. You have all taken enough math to know what a sine curve looks like. That's all this is. The graph of the motion, or I should say position versus time, ends up being the graph of a sine curve. Okay? That's what sinusoidal graph means. So this is what simple harm, this is all it is. Okay? An object is subject to some sort of force that we're calling a restoring force. That force is proportional to the displacement of the object. In other words, if the displacement increases, the restoring force increases and the restoring force acts opposite the displacement. Whatever direction the displacement is in, the restoring force acts in the opposite direction. Okay, so just a little bit more about restoring force. It is simply a force that tends to return a system to its equilibrium point. A force that tends to return a system to its equilibrium point. Okay? That's really it. So, um, there are really two examples of simple harmonic motion we will discuss. One is a system in which we have a spring. And on the end of that spring, is a mass, and the mass will oscillate 
in simple harmonic motion. Okay, there's a spring hanging or a mass hanging on a spring. I pull the mass down. Oh, okay, well, this mass probably isn't heavy enough. Let me get a bigger one. Let's see, this will work. Not that that one wasn't heavy enough, but wasn't going to do what I wanted it to do. Come on, there we go. Okay. This is simple harmonic motion right here. We have a mass that's oscillating on the end of a spring. Hopefully you can see that right there. Um, in this case, we have the spring is able to provide that restoring force. Let's go to our definition. The object is subject to a restoring force proportional to its displacement. Remember, restoring force tries to bring a system back to equilibrium. Okay? Right now, this is equilibrium for this system. This is the equilibrium level. If I pull down, what happens to the force from the spring? It's more. Okay? It wants to it increases. It wants to bring the mass back to equilibrium. Okay? So not only does stretching this out more increase the force on the spring, but that force is directed up back towards equilibrium. So what happens is we get this oscillation motion. Okay? I could also show this if I had a frictionless surface and I had something like this where the mass oscillated in and out like this. Okay? That would be another way that I could demonstrate this. So for a spring, the restoring force is very simple. It is the spring force. Okay. The spring force increases as the object moves away from equilibrium, and the spring force is always directed back towards equilibrium. The other example of simple harmonic motion that we will talk about are pendulums. Pendulum also undergoes simple harmonic motion to an extent. Okay, there is a, there is a qualifier in front of that. The pendulum is very simple. You have something hanging on the end of a string, you move it up, you displace it, and you let it oscillate back and forth like this. Okay? So, again, there is uh, it does satisfy these two characteristics. There is a restoring force proportional to the displacement, and the restoring force acts opposite the displacement. What force brings the pendulum back towards its equilibrium position? Here's equilibrium right here. What force brings it back down here? Gravity. Okay, gravity will pull it back down, and specifically it's the component of gravity that points perpendicular to the tension. Okay, right when it's hanging down like this, gravity is parallel to the tension, there is no restoring force. As I, and I'll kind of keep my finger here as a guide, as I bring this pendulum up, okay, my finger, the component of gravity perpendicular to the tension in the, to the string, becomes bigger and bigger until if I bring it all the way up here, it's perfectly aligned with the force of gravity. So the more I bring this up, the greater the restoring force. The restoring force gets bigger, and if the displacement is for you guys up and to the right, that means that the restoring force is down and to the left for my pendulum. Right there. Okay? So for a pendulum, uh, the restoring force is gravity. More specifically, it's a component of the force of gravity, but we can get away with just saying gravity. But do realize it is not the full force of gravity. Okay? That doesn't change, obviously, the object's mass isn't changing. It's the component of gravity that acts perpendicular to the string. Okay? So both of these objects the spring system and the pendulum, they undergo simple harmonic motion. Okay, those are the two main cases that we will talk about. There are two more terms that I want to discuss really quick before we get into kind of the nitty gritty of this unit, um, the, the key details. These are two words that get mixed up all the time. They're very simple words. You need to memorize these definitions. Okay, it's not worth you know struggling to figure out what they are each time. Uh, and these words are period and frequency. Period is very simple, okay? It is the amount of time for one complete cycle or revolution or oscillation, we'll go with oscillation, to happen. Symbol for period 
it's a big capital T, and the units are seconds. Okay. Period is the amount of time that it takes for something to happen once. For example, <clears throat> one full oscillation, I should say. If I displace my pendulum up here, and I let it swing all the way through, that is one period when I catch it again, okay? So start, stop. This is half a period from here to here. That's half a period. This is one full period. Here's two full periods, okay? It's one full oscillation all the way back to the starting point. For a spring system, okay, if I start my spring, let's say I do this, I bring it up, it goes down, when it gets all the way back up, that is one full oscillation. Okay, or if I pull down, it goes up, and then back down, that is one full oscillation. It is not just for a spring system of time for it to go from down to up or the lowest point to the highest point, or if it was a horizontal spring from out here to all the way in, it is when it returns to its original position and is going in the, in the direction it was originally going in. Okay? That's the definition of one period for a, uh, a spring system and for a period. The last word that we will define <clears throat> is frequency. Frequency, again, is fairly basic. Frequency is how many oscillations or cycles occur per second. So essentially you're counting how many times something happens per second. It could be a very high number, it could be a fraction, okay? It just means how many cycles happen per second. The symbol is a lowercase f, and the units are hertz or one over seconds, per second. Okay, you're counting something per second, one over second. So the one thing you should remember, if you look here, you have seconds for the units for period. For frequency, you have one over seconds or inverse seconds. This should remind you that period and frequency are inverses of each other. If you know one, you know the other, okay? If the period of something is five seconds, then the frequency is 0 0.2 hertz. If the frequency, I don't know, is uh, 100 hertz, then the period is 0 0.01 seconds. Okay, they're inversely related to each other. So, these are some just general definitions that you need to know. Hopefully you have them copied down. Obviously you can always just pause this if you wanna take some more time to copy it down. I'm going to erase them, we'll get into some of the details with, uh, we'll do springs first. And after I'm actually done with this, I'm gonna check the battery, see how we're doing. Might have to stop it right here, in which case I will send out another video. Let's see. Okay. Looks like we're still recording, so that's good. So, let's go down to horizontal and vertical springs. So here we are right here. Uh, I'm gonna ask you to split your paper in two. We're gonna deal with vertical springs uh, on one side, horizontal springs on another. Vertical and horizontal. And I want you to make one note about this. <clears throat> What we are doing is we are assuming in, in, in this example, we're assuming no damping. Damping is a fancy word for friction. Damping, uh, if I so let me give you an example. If I were to take this pendulum, okay, and I set it going. As time goes on, you'll notice that the oscillations become less and less in their maximum displacement. Uh, and over time, it'll take a long time for this one, but the pendulum eventually just comes to a stop. What that is, that is called damping. It is just friction, 
Okay, that's all it is. It is friction taking away the energy from the system. We are going to assume, and you will mostly assume in most of these cases, that there is no damping, that this is frictionless. Okay, so you will assume that all the energy stays in the system. ET equals ET. Let's start off with our vertical case first. And again, we're assuming no damping right here. So let's draw a picture. We're going to have kind of like a three-fold picture here. That is our ceiling. Okay. Right here we've got a mass and a spring. The spring is compressed a little bit right now. Our second stage is our spring at its equilibrium length. Right that. And then our third stage is our spring at its most stretched out. And the mass on the spring is oscillating between all these cases. Starts up here, stretches out to its maximum, then goes back here, and so it's moving back and forth. Okay, that's all I'm trying to get this to say. Now, at positions A, B, and C, let's see, how did I write this? At positions A, B, and C, there are a number of quantities that we could measure, quantities that you should know what the value is. Okay, you should know what the um, maybe not the exact value every time, but you should have a general idea of how these quantities are changing when they are at maximum, when they are at minimum, when they are zero, if they're increasing, decreasing, etc. So we're going to list these here. Some of the things you might want to know about this system, okay? Well, first of all, you might want to know its height at any one point. We'll describe that with y. You might want to know its speed. Uh, you might want to know the acceleration you know the speed, you can describe the kinetic energy. The question might ask about the elastic potential energy uh, or even the gravitational potential energy. And then finally, you might want to know about the restoring force acting on the object. So let's fill in these for A. Now, the Y position at A, let's assume, okay, to make this simple, that the Y position uh, is zero at C. If it's zero at C, it must be at a maximum at point A. So we're just going to write maximum, or max, okay, for short. This is the highest the object will get. If this is the highest it will get, that means it is no longer moving upward and is just starting to return to move back down it. It actually hasn't started moving back down yet. So it's not moving. So at this point, the speed would be zero at the highest point. Kind of makes sense. Okay, so the first two are pretty easy. The acceleration, <clears throat> okay, this is the most compressed the spring gets. And you guys know how springs work. The more you compress or stretch a spring, the higher the force. We'll get back to that when we talk about force in a little bit. But the force being fairly high here, the force from the spring would be pushing this object down. Okay, the force is pushing the object down. So it's a really big force, and it's pushing it down, which we've kind of decided is negative. So that means that the acceleration must be really big and negative. As a matter of fact, the acceleration is at its negative maximum here. It is as big as it's going to get downward in that direction. So I just put a negative and then a maximum. Easy one next. If the velocity is zero, the kinetic energy must be zero. Ooh, spring potential energy. The spring potential energy, if this is the most compressed that the object is going to get, then what that means is that if, if this is the most it's uh, that, sorry, if this is the most compressed it's going to get, um, then the stored potential energy is really, really high. So you know we're just gonna write next to US um, the spring, the elastic potential energy, we're just going to write high right next to it. Okay, It's clearly not zero. Okay, The spring has compressed. It's not at its equilibrium length. But the um, I, there are some things that I do question about this course and just things that I probably should know better, but I, I would need to look up. 
Um, I'm not sure if it's completely at a maximum here, but we're just going to say we know that it has some elastic potential energy. So let's just say it's really high for right now. Okay, I'm going to look into that one. Um, gravitational potential energy. I can tell you for sure that that is at a maximum. Why? It's at the highest point. Okay, it's the highest it's going to get. The gravitational potential energy is at a maximum. So this is also max. Okay. And finally, for the force. Okay. Force is very uh, is related to acceleration. They're always very similar. If the acceleration is at a negative maximum, guess what? The force is at a negative maximum as well. The force is the restoring force, the spring force.